Hi there, Thack here from Thack Ironworks. Today we are going to go through the process of building the Hollow Knight sword, um, which is a project I just did and we did a video on it without talking on it, just kind of a, a visual. And this is a follow up to that showing um, the process and just with me talking in the background. So here we go. Um, and before I start, I just want to shout out to Paul Pridham, who is a student of mine uh, and a game designer. And he was the one who suggested um, this build. He thought it would be a cool build for my channel. And so I just wanted to give a shout out to him, Mad Garden Inc. He does uh, games like Death Road to Canada. So if you're a gamer, you might want to check that one out. It could be a lot of fun. So anyway, let's get started. So with the Hollow Knight sword, the first thing I did was get a computer printout of a couple of images of it. And from there, I scaled up a full size template. So I started with the inch and a half square cut a piece. It was about, I don't know, again, two feet long and I knew that was going to draw out in length. So started on the power hammer, heating it up in the forge and onto the power hammer, drying that out to a point. Once I had it drawn out to a long tapering point, then I turned it on the diamond or on the corner and started flattening that out to create that elliptical shape. As I was doing that, I was realizing at the, the widest part, looking like I wasn't gonna have enough material. I was trying to capture the simple geometry of that shape, but at the same time, I wanted it to be plausible as far as looking like the shape, but at the same time, I wanted to be able to taper it down to an actual cutting edge. The shape turned out to be deceptively tricky to make, even though it looks geometrically pretty straightforward, pretty simple found it to be pretty tricky to do. Anyway, as I got foraging out the width and I realized I didn't have enough material there, I didn't think I did. I took a few blocks of steel, I think they were about three quarter inch square steel, about two inches long and welded them on using the MIG welder. Once I had them tacked on with a MIG welder, I fluxed it and forge welded them into place to add some extra mass at the base of the blade there just to give a little bit more width. And I'm glad that I did that. It gave me sufficient material to be able to get that shape. So once I had my extra width there, then I moved on to a special tool that I made, which is two round bars welded together, forming a crack in the middle. I could call that a camel toe, I suppose, but it's not really, I, it, part of it is a camel toe shape, uh, <laughs> uh, but it deviates from the, the traditional camel toe or moose knuckle um, tool, which, uh, I find very useful for certain applications. Anyway, silliness aside, that was the shape that I needed in order to get that hollow ground cross section, which is a pretty tricky shape to try to forge. I basically needed somewhere for that crevice to drop down into and I could shape from the top. So you can see how that worked, worked quite well as far as we're coming in with a rounding hammer and then forging out that hollow ground shape is the way that is called. A fairly slow process in order to get that shape to thin out to, to the edges and keep that triangular geometry. After I forged it pretty much to shape, then I began getting in with the angle grinder and removing some of the anomalies and then back to the forge. And it was a little back and forth to get that final shape. I was trying to go with a forge to shape as much as possible, but at the end I did have to cut away some extraneous part at the base of the blade here. I'm squaring it off to create that shape. I had to sharpen that up and then got onto the knife grinder and shaped the profile to clean that up and to get that nice straight triangular section. Once I had that, I started grinding the bevels to bring it to more of a cutting edge. And then I needed to get in with the angle grinder to just kind of form the contours and have everything blend into itself nicely. And then back on the forge for a little bit of final fine tuning to get that final shape. Once I had that, I just gun blued the whole thing and quenched it. And as you can see, it had a cutting edge was able to slice the cardboard quite nicely. A little bit unwieldy as far as a functional weapon, probably about 10 pounds, so a little unwieldy for something so short, but it did cut and it certainly has a real dynamic appeal to it. I have to say, I like the aesthetic. I think it's pretty cool. If you've made it this far in this video without subscribing, please hit the subscribe button and leave your comments below, thumbs up, and join us next time we wanna do uh, I think I might do the, another variation of this sword with the uh, twisting and that sort of thing in. Maybe I'll do something like a cable Damascus. So join us in the future. 
Please subscribe. Back out.